I know that you slept with Lindsay when you were in Portland. She called me, she told me everything. And he'll be like, it's true, I really did. I don't know, Lindsay. <laughs> Got him. Most people would lie to avoid offending a friend, true or false? True. I think it's true. I had a friend once that had real bad body odor and uh, didn't know how to tell them. Just suggested, you know, string vests. <laughs> Still haven't told them, so if you're watching, you stink, bro. You know who you are. <laughs> um, Catherine, have you ever lied to save someone's feelings? I mean, I would lie to hurt feelings. <laughs> that is a little bit too much honesty, but I, I appreciate it. Earlier on, I was like, I'm, I'm going through a difficult stage growing out my fringe, but you said I look fine, but I do feel like I might look like a Victorian boy. Is there... Mm. Or Jimmy. You've got like, literally Jimmy the same haircut as me. Do I look like a female yes. Jimmy? No. Not a female one, no. <laughs> The best lying skill that I've ever come up with is to pretend to know something to make the other person confess. That's a great <sighs> trick. Yes, yes, And they yes. always do. Men are so stupid. <laughs> You'll just be like, I know that you slept with Lindsay when you were in Portland. She called me, she told me everything. She sent me the pictures that you texted her of your <laughs> And he'll be like, it's true, I really did. I don't know, Lindsay. <laughs> Got him. I'm not kidding, like, do it, and they will always cave. Mm. I'm afraid we have to cut that from the show because of, uh, boy code. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but we can't let that go out because, you know, <laughs> bros. Exactly. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I wish we could. Have you got Lindsay's number? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, what's the worst lie we've all told? What's the worst lie you've told, Dane? Uh, I lied about my A-level results. We'll go on. No, 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 only on a CV. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've all lied on a CV. Yeah, that course, is like exactly. your base standard. Like, how many people here really know to use Microsoft Access? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, have you told any, any whopping I, lies? I um, got out of work on Christmas Eve by telling them my nan died. Oh. Three years running. <laughs> that, to be fair, though, my nan had died, but it was eight years earlier. But I thought, <laughs> it's like, you know, cash it in. It's like an inheritance, if you think about it. Yeah, that's all I was getting. <laughs> um, Alex, any, any, any big lies? Um, probably the last one is about spatial awareness. <laughs> Go on. I just said that I didn't have any um, when I was trying to pass my bus driving test. Are you, are you not, you're doing great on the one show. I think they'll keep you on. <laughs> It's nice to have a backup plan, I but am. what are you doing? Um, so we were doing a bus driving test, and yeah. I, the reverse in was all going pear shape. Um, so I said, I've got this thing where I've got no spatial awareness. So, so sorry, you're saying I should pass the test because you yeah. can't discriminate because I've got no spatial awareness. I could go forward, fine, but I just couldn't reverse. <laughs> I feel like everyone's skimming over the fact that you said, when I was doing my bus driving test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? I can drive a bendy bus, a double-decker bus, any bus. <laughs> it was like a challenge uh, yeah. for children in need, but I can take okay. you all home if you're stuck. <laughs> oh, then, did they pass you after you said you had no spatial awareness? Yeah. I feel like if I was getting on a bus, that would be a big thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, really, you wouldn't get on a plane and you'd be like, ladies and gentlemen, you just relax yourselves. No, I am visually impaired, however... We... <laughs> You would actually have children in need on your bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it all in, and I, like, use it as fuel, and then when I get on TV, I make them regret it. Right? It's very much the Avril Lavigne skater boy method. <laughs> best way to get over a breakup. Find good places to cry. Like, there's good things and good places to cry. Like, you can turn the hoover on and cry. No one's going to hear you. Go in the shower. No one's even going to notice if you're crying because mm -hmm. the shower is on your face. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to yeah. see the tears. When it's raining, go out and cry. Go Walk in the, the streets, streets crying. <laughs> Jump in the canal, cry. Don't no, go. <laughs> go deep sea diving, yeah. cry. <laughs> Great way. You've had heartbreak in the past. How'd you get over it anyway? Uh, I just pretend it never happened. Do you know what I mean? Total just... denial. No, no. <laughs> yeah. no that's breaker. the best idea. Psychiatrists recommend total <laughs> denial. <laughs> Keep it all in until eventually you kill. <laughs> you never speak to them, you never speak about them, they can't contact you on any platform. Absolutely genius. I do the opposite. Oh. I hold it all in, 
and I like use it as fuel and then when I get on TV I make them regret it. Right. It's very much the Avril Lavigne skater boy method. <laughs> so I do, like, like, look, look she'll, she'll be watching this now, and I'll be like, yeah, b it's me rocking up E4. Well, why don't you call up your friends? What's that? They already know, and they've got tickets to see my show. Why don't you go along, stand in the crowd, look up at the man you turned down? F off. <laughs> People don't really regret breaking up with me very often. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit like that. None of my exes have ever seemed to struggle. <laughs> Is that because you're holding them too tight? <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you got broken up with in a... I just got pissed. Really? I just got really, long for? really... Couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, best way to get over a breakup? When my friends have breakups, I say, you know, get a hobby, like... <laughs> dad. <laughs> Actually, there was one guy who broke up with me and I was really busy, I was working a lot, I was on tour, and I was so hungry and I was just about to eat this burrito and I Skyped him and he was, he was having a breakdown on the Skype about breaking up with me. And he was like, I just, I really, I think I, I wanna, and I was like, oh, what? Because I really wanted to eat the burrito. He's like, I think we should break up. And I said, fine, and then I ate the burrito. And then he explained his reasons for wanting to break up with me and I kept eating the burrito. And then later on I saw him and he said, you never even stopped eating your burrito. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I knew he never understood me. I think sometimes because you're, you watch movies and stuff, you put too much emphasis on a breakup, where sometimes yeah. you're not actually that bothered, but you feel like you should be. And I remember I broke up with this girl. <laughs> she broke up with me before, and then we got back together, and then we both agreed that we should be breaking up. But it was still a bit sad. I remember I was making sausage and mash, right, when we had the phone call, and I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, put it down. I was like, I feel sad. And I said to my flatmates, you know, like, I'm... I'm like, upset. I'm not hungry anymore. And I went and like, sat in the front room with him for like, half an hour and I went, yeah, I think I will go and eat that social man. <laughs> <laughs> OK, best way to get over a breakup. Let's get some answers. This is the first thing you do when you get the call that she's broken up with Cry. you. Cry. Call your friends. Yes, the best way to get over a breakup is to hang out with friends. Yeah. <laughs>